Hi, my name is Mark Verko. I'm one of the keepers here at the Cotswold Wildlife Park and I thought you might like to come around with me for the day. I've got to make up the diets for the pheasants and the turacos. It's, it's becoming ever more important than nutrition because um, it's, sort of, it is far too easy to just throw food and throw food at the animals and they survive. It's another thing to to actually get it right and let them thrive. So um, we've got to make sure that we can sort of make it as accurate as possible. Um, it's just purely chopped apple and chopped pear. Um, they're the bits that can run through our fruit chopper. We've got a fruit chopper um, that sort of dices it up nice and small for us. And then we add a bit of variety so we can add, we can add things like grapes, banana, papaya. So we get all our fruit and veg in from a, a grocer, a local grocer. Um, and we'll, wherever possible, we'll kind of, we'll source it locally. We feed in all, sort of, all manner of different ways. We can start, we've got pheasants and turacos down here, so they're perfectly suited to live with one another, ground dwelling species and an arboreal species. Um, and we tend to feed the pheasants, we give them a scatter feed, so it encourages the natural uh, scraping and sort of foraging behaviour of these guys. Um, it also is a perfect opportunity to pull them out of the undergrowth and uh, get a chance to see them. I mean, you can't really miss something like that guy, but uh, the female, on the other hand, just to his right, is a, um, it's a little harder to spot. I've just fed the turacos. Um, they kept their diet in a, in a bit more of a bowl. Um, it's, a, sort of, it's an easier way to feed them in as far as we can, we can monitor their their feed intake much easier that way. Um, pheasants, you can see, the second you scatter some fee food down, they start foraging, whereas the turacos are quite flighty birds and, um, and they wouldn't settle until we'd gone. So we feed them in the bowl for, an, for that reason and also it's a separate feed site. It means they don't have to interact with the pheasants, don't have to compete against the pheasants. Um, so it just keeps the separate feed sites so that they're, they're able to sort of feed in peace. This is our, our squirrel monkey. She's a female that we, uh, our, our group gave birth to, one of the females in our group gave birth to. But she, it was a first time mum and she, she abandoned the youngster. And we, a small group of squirrel monkeys, it's, it's incredibly difficult to get them to breed and to get them to boost their numbers so that they do breed well. So what we've done here is, because she's a female, we've, we've just taken the decision to hand her and introduce her to the group, which is hence why she's in the squirrel monkey enclosure now, but with, um, with a divide so that we can slowly but surely sort of introduce the squirrel monkeys into here and, and they can get to know one another. But she still, still requires the odd little bit of food from us. So she's she's been reared on on the on a baby milk, on gold top baby milk. Um, and uh, so I get some funny looks in Sainsbury's when I go and buy just one tub of baby milk every now and again. I always knew I wanted to work with animals. It was just how or where I was gonna work with them. Um, and more and more, the more I thought about it, the more I liked the, the exotic species and particularly sort of conserving them. Now, uh, there's two ways that you can conserve, in situ and ex situ, and the nature of the studying that I did to lent itself to the ex situ to start with and then move into studying in the field. Um, and yeah, it's sort of just a great day to be had <laughs> every day. Right, so uh, it's just coming up to 11 o'clock and it's the first penguin feed of the day. So um, 
got to go and entertain the crowds as well as feeding the penguins. Um, and it's sort of a five, ten minute job uh, that gets done twice a day. Um, so we've just got to get around there and prep up now. Good morning folks, welcome to Cotswold Wildlife Park and welcome to the first penguin feed here of the day. My name is Mark and I'm one of the keepers in the walled garden. Here at the park our penguins have the option of using the boxes behind me and the caves opposite and so far this year they haven't. It's the first year it's ever happened and hopefully it's the last but they've just completely gone off the boil. They haven't laid a single egg this year but they have gone through the molt recently and our pairs are starting to show signs of nest building again when we've got about three nests currently in construction. So hopefully come Christmas we should have at least eggs if not chicks. To get where I am today, um, I've studied for a national diploma, for a higher national diploma, and then tops that up to an honours degree. Um, more and more now, zookeeping is becoming a science. It has to be. It's no longer a case of just a, an example of wealth. Uh, there's science that goes behind keeping all these animals, so you have to have that scientific background. And when you make breakthroughs, you need to be able to write about it, record it, write abstracts and articles so you need to have that understanding and that's really the justification for that. You can't just come in off the back of school anymore and have a, an avid interest in animals. You, you need to be able to contribute more to it. Um, there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing wrong with having the avid interest, you just need to take that on a bit further. So next job of the day is to feed the big wader Avery. Um, just at the door here, we've got a bird that some of the keepers have chosen to name Sox. Um, but he's a, a little egret that was hand-reared and um, he's far, far too imprinted. Um, as you will begin to see, there's absolutely no fear of us whatsoever. Come on, Egypt. So he's just had a bit of just had a bit of bream, uh, freshwater bream, uh, in the bid to try and keep it quiet whilst um, whilst we go and feed the rest of the birds. But you can see he's he's sort of very attached to the keepers, um, particularly the, the the ones that reared it, um, and uh, it just means you have to go careful where you're moving your feet. Got a bit of fish stuck, but he'll sort that out. We'll get that get that down. There you go. Um, so yeah, we try not to give him too much attention because it just encourages further behaviour like that. What I like most about working here depends on the time of year. If it's winter, it's the tropical house. <laughs> now what I like most about working here is the fact that every day is different. You're not tied to a desk, you're not tied to the computer. You how you work with public just as much as you work with the animals. It's no good thinking that you're going to become a zookeeper because you can't stand people because they are what keep the place running. So um, it's a good mix of highs, lows, public, animals, warm, cold, sun, rain, everything. Uh, but most of all, there's no desk. So that's the good thing. At the end of the day, last job we've got to do is just um, shut some of the birds in. It's meant to be quite a cold night tonight. Uh, keep them in, stick their heat lamps on and um, keep them all toasty warm. So, got that to do. And then we've got to shut the garden and go home. So this is the Mauritian pink pigeon, it's one of the rarest birds in the world, it's got to very low numbers in the wild um, and it's been rescued really, so it's a good example of a bird that's been rescued through, through zoos and the work that they do. So the pink pigeon really and truthfully has been rescued by these guys, the magician's bird, Barbary doves and they, they act as foster parents for the the pink pigeons, they incubate the egg and then rear the chick and um, these act as foster mum and dad. Right, so that's everybody tucked up in bed all nice and warm. 
All that's left for me to do is shut the park and send the visitors on their way, and that includes you guys. But if you do want to come into this industry, you'll have a fab time. So my top tip for getting into this industry to become a zookeeper would be to volunteer as much as you can. Get as much experience as you can and combine that with an education at a college or a university and then you stand yourself in good stead to be employed.